Yo, what's good, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another All-American Homecoming Review. This is Season 3, Episode 13, entitled Survivor. This is the series finale of All-American Homecoming. And y'all, I do not want to let this show go. I do not want it to be over. I just don't. It is actually one of my favorite shows to watch. I don't watch a lot of TV so when I actually get into a television show, I really get into the television show. Um, if this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell somebody to tell somebody if you choose to. If not, just sit back, relax while we get into this thing. I don't even know where to start because for this to be the series finale, there were certain things that did come to an end. However, we were still left with many open-ended storylines. I am really hoping that another network picks up this show because it's just too great of a show to be over. I can't believe it. I don't want to let these characters go. Like, yes, I know they fake. So don't, don't, don't come over here with that. Um, I know this is fake. I know that it is fallacy. I know that it is fiction. However, comma, it's very rare that we get black centered shows that actually have great writing and this was one of those shows that exhibited uh great writing and I just love the third season I love the direction they were going in it's just you know too bad that you know it was their final season or just prayerfully it's their final season on the CW and they find a new home elsewhere um but getting into this episode y'all already know I'm not gonna go in order I'm just gonna talk about I'm, I don't I don't have notes when I do these reviews I'm just gonna talk about whatever pops in my mind but I think I want to start with the character of JR. And if you've been listening to me these few, you know, moments that I have released an All American Homecoming review, you know that I don't have really have a favorite character. I'm I wasn't really shipping anybody. Um I just enjoy the show for what it is. And the character of J <laughs> the character of JR really made me laugh this episode. I know some people were entirely pissed off at him. But you know what? I've been saying this ever since the third season began. I always believed that there was something brewing in the pot for JR and Keisha. But initially, we didn't know what it was. Then we found out it was, you know, she gave him hit her bone marrow, saved his life. But we all could tell that it was something deeper. It was deeper than friendship. Not to say that they were not friends, but of course, they used that excuse, I believe, to not even consider the fact that they may actually have romantic feelings for each other. And I know some people didn't want to believe that JR had romantic feelings for Keisha. They wanted to believe that it was only her. But I saw this from a mile away. JR is one of those men, not that he's green. He may not always get the hint, but he's not innocent. He's not innocent by a long shot. And I think his feelings for Keisha were just as, to me, evident as her feelings for him. But even in this episode here, um, keeping in the lines with JR and Keisha, I think Keisha got to a place where I honestly believe Keisha has feelings for both JR and Cam. That's just my personal opinion. And I think she's okay with that. I also believe she's okay with not being with either one of them. Because honestly, I don't believe Keisha wants to be with Cam right now nor do I believe she wants to be with JR but I do believe that she has feelings for both men and it, I know a lot of people didn't like the character of Keisha Keisha's my girl like all love them on my girl you know all the women on my girl but um when Keisha made the statement that she was out of her self-sabotage season and I believe that Kim is a great man he really is but sometimes when the person who has the deficiency in the relationship levels up the person who was already on another level, y'all just might not be, you know what I'm saying, uh, congruent. Y'all might not be equal. Y'all might not be right for each other. And not that I believe that to be the case for them, but I just believe that Keisha is really in a place of honesty and transparency. And she wants to be by herself, recognizing the fact that she's always in a relationship, recognizing the fact that being alone may be the best place for her to be in this season of her life. I commended Keisha and I was all the way here for her coming to that um that self-reflection and that self-acknowledgement. But going back to my boy JR, 
Oh, JR in this episode, it was a bit disappointing. And I'm going to tell you why I was a bit disappointed in him. J- <laughs> JR truly exemplified to me that Gabby really didn't mean much to him. And not only did Gabby not mean much to him, reconciling his relationship with Cam didn't mean much to him either. Because, of course, we see, you know, the famous Damon Sims up here. And they're having a conversation. And JR lets Damon know that it's Keisha, that she that he has feelings for her. However, he's unsure how her feelings for him may be. He doesn't know. And I found it incredibly interesting that we went through this entire episode without really finding out how does Keisha really feel about JR because I am one of those people who believe that she does have feelings for him. She's just not in a place or position to act out on them or to explore them. And so Damon, rightfully so, tells JR, like, look, if you think it's Keisha, go for it. But you need to have a talk with Cam. Like, that is something that you have to do. Now, mind you, even though Damon was giving great advice, I'm like, baby boy, you can't really speak on this topic because I didn't forget what you did to Thea. Okay? I didn't forget what you did to Thea. I didn't forget how you treated Thea. I didn't forget all about that you was with Thea. Then you blink your eye, you boning Simone in her dorm room. Okay? I ain't forget, but we not there yet. (laughs) I just had to throw that little, you know, tidbit out there. And I agree with Damon. I I really did. You know, I I understand that they're young. They're between the ages of 20 and 23. And your feelings change. Not that they're not real and and true. However, there is a right and a wrong way to do things. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that when you intentionally go about trying to hurt people, you know, I can't walk with that. So Damon gave JR great advice. JR completely dismissed it. He goes to knock on Keisha's door to tell Keisha how he feels about her. And Cam opens the door. JR treated Cam as if he was their doorman. He looked past that man as if he was nobody. Yeah, I'm looking for Keisha. Where's she at? Basically, what's his attitude? Oh, she not here? Okay, I'll come back later. And then, you know, Cam called him out like, oh, you was really coming to, you know, to check my girl? I just wanted to tell her how I felt. Baby, JR had all the audacity in the world. Then again, Cam, that's not your girl. Because last time I checked, you broke up with Keisha. Now, you and Keisha are in a great place, and I'm going to get to them in a minute. Now, they are in a great place within their dynamic. However, she's not your girl. Y'all are not together. Y'all are not in a romantic relationship. I understood where Cam was coming from, but Keisha's not your girl. It's free game. However, JR is messy as hell. Because he should have told Cam in that moment, like, I did come to tell Keisha how I felt about her. However, since you're here, you know, I think me, you need to have a conversation or not even a conversation. I'm just letting you know that I was wrong. I apologize for how I feel about Keisha. Is Whatever he needed to say, he needed to acknowledge his wrongdoing and Jr. didn't. And that's how we kind of ended the series with Jr. He did not acknowledge his wrongdoing. He did not come to a good place with Cam. I felt like Jr. was like, look, I want Keisha the hell with your feelings, Cam. I really don't care. I mean, he didn't give two dams about Gabby's. So why should he give two dams about Cam? That's really how Jr. was moving in this episode. But going to Cam and Keisha, I really enjoyed the place that we saw them get to, the resolve that they are in the dynamic of their, I guess, newfound friendship. And we know that Cam is just a good guy. Cam is a good dude. I always thought that Keisha was a, you know, that's my that's my dog, that's my homie. You know, I just felt Keisha was just like a lot of other young women when you're that age or you're trying to find yourself or you really never had a um a, a real relationship where somebody really showed you what it was like to be cared for thought about and loved in a healthy way and everybody does not know how to function within that now now that's not to justify any of her wrongdoing I'm just saying and so we see them get to a beautiful place in their relationship Keisha is in a dilemma because that she's going to go on tour however she needs to do her finals and it's a conflict of scheduling she had a partner because she was going to do her um her final early, but he I think he sprained his ankle or something, so he couldn't do it. She gets with Cam. He offers his help to help her with her dance, stayed up all night to learn the choreography, and they dance to, I know that it is a remake before anybody get up on here. I know that. 
<laughs> to Avant and uh, Kiki Wyatt's um, My First Love. And uh, Avant is one of my favorite favorite male artists. That's neither here nor there. I just thought I'd tell y'all a little bit um, more information about me. I love Avant. And um, it was a beautiful dance. I believe it was definitely their relationship being reflected through the dance. It was beautiful. It was intimate. I loved it. And... Lando is like, dude, you finna let her walk up out of here? Like, you better go get your girl. And Kim, I'm like, nah, you know, it was just a dance. Okay. Okay. You know, Keisha leaves. And I respected the fact, and I actually loved that they did not get back together in this series finale. I believe that Keisha needs to be in a place of singledom, okay, by herself, is, by herselfness. Just to get to a place of really understanding who she is, falling in love with herself because I she's definitely on the up and up, and I just want her to remain in that place. And sometimes having a relationship can be a stumbling block. And I just I I'm okay with how their story ended, even though Kim was like, "That's my girl," and I'm like, "She's not your girl." But anyway, keep up alive, bro. We'll see what happens if y'all get picked up by another network, which I hope they do. And even if they do, I hope they keep Keisha and Cam away from each other for a minute. Is that who she really want? What is her, you know, her desire at this moment? And I love that they talked about their futures. And a lot of times when you're in relationships like that and you're young, even when you get older, when you talk about your future with your partner, you're really meshing them into one. And separation anxiety is something that is very real when you've been, when you've been with someone. It even happens in um, platonic friendships and the friendship you know is broken uh the relation the friendship is no more you know you decide that the friendship is not beneficial for you both and you miss that person you want to call them you want to share your your news with them and then you realize dang I can't because we don't have that anymore that is such a humbling feeling to feel that and I've been there before on both ends on friendship and romantic relationships and I'm glad that Keisha and Cam had an opportunity to display that to the audience it's just so much in these shows in this particular episode I'm like I said I'm just sad to see it go because it's so much to dissect and I really don't want this review to be long so I'm not going to stop doing certain reviews and, and certain topics about All-American Homecoming because it was it's such a beautiful uh, display of young black HBCU culture and young black relationships and friendships and parenthood and you know it, it's so much but anyway before I get off on a tangent um let's go to Nate Nate's I don't really okay I'm not gonna say I didn't care but Nate boyfriend broke up with her I mean you know, Nate is one of those people who I understand seeking justice and wanting, you know, justice to, to ring and justice to be fulfilled and all of that good stuff like that. But there is a thin line, okay, between um, doing what's moral and doing what's ethical, all right, and going behind your man back and reading their private notes so that justice can be served is not the way you go about things. It is not the way you go. It's not the way you go about things. The boyfriend breaking up with Nate. You know, I'm like, did I really care? I didn't. But Nate was hurt, so I did care about that. Because <laughs> I'm like, this dude wasn't doing it for me. They switched characters from the the guy from the previous season, who I liked more. This guy just wasn't doing it for me. So breaking up with Nate, although I, you know, I felt bad for Nate. I'm like, okay. You get some ideas because this person wasn't it anyway. But that's all that was uh, to that particular storyline. Thea, I'm so mad at how they did Thea this season. I'm so mad how they did Thea this season. I will say season one, I was not uh, a fan of Thea. Thea was getting on my nerves. I didn't start liking the character Thea maybe to the end of season one, especially season two. That was my dog. That was my homie. But I didn't really care for her in season one. And um, I think it was a disservice how her character basically became like a piece of decoration um, in this season. Like she really didn't have much to do. I felt like even though 
her and so I'm going to talk about Damon Damon coming back even with that it was just so like I know he was with Simone but it was almost as if him and Thea had nothing like she meant nothing to him it was just really unrealistic to me like yes they did date it didn't work out okay but for it to be like oh I'm just hugging my buddy old pal it was just weird and I just didn't like how they did Thea's character because it's like okay what do we really know because we always see her around campus she's not a student she is on the pro circuit however we don't know is she really back in the pro circuit what is Thea doing with her life other than hanging around her college friends and she's not really, she's not enrolled. What's going on? I don't know many kids. I don't know many people who are not enrolled in college. Who's always on campus. And don't get me wrong. When I was in school, I went to fam, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Florida a and university. Of course you had a lot of people hanging around campus that were not students. But what I'm saying is they were there for stuff they shouldn't have been there for. Thea, on the other hand, okay, of course, these are her friends, but it's like, baby girl, what is, what are you doing? Have you won a pro match yet? Are you back in training? Because you're always, always on campus. But that's neither here nor there. That's all that was really with her. She didn't really do nothing this episode but be a decoration and, you know, kind of be Nate's shadow this episode. That was it. And I'm sad that my homegirl went out like that because I think I believe that Thea, Thea's character deserved more. I think that's everybody with that. Now, let's get to the nitty gritty of this entire episode. OK, so it opens up. It, uh, op- it it definitely it picks back up for where the last episode left off at. And these rumors are going around about Simone taking these enhancements, taking something that enhanced her play. And we all know that the only thing Simone was taking was cancer medication. I love the fact that Simone stood on the principle of, I don't need to tell anyone my business. The sports world and no one should be privy to that. That is my personal business. And I loved how she stood on that. Either the NCAA is going to make a statement or this rumor is just going to blow away. But, you know, I'm not going to be the one to add, you know, fuel to the fire, which I did love. And I said, now, if y'all go this episode without her and Lando having a conversation, I'm going to be pissed. So Coach Lonnie wanted her to come to her office so she could make sure she was okay. And then, you know, JR tells Lando that they, they got to have a meeting to talk about baseball because, you know, Lando is trying to have this conversation with Simone. And, of course, he knows, you know, what she's going to say, but they have to wait till the next day to have this conversation. So we find out that it is Damon Sims. Who comes out, who is the savior, and he saves the baseball situation by being their sponsor. And Lando wasn't too happy about that. I had someone ask me, was I surprised that there were no scenes with Lando and Damon? And I was not surprised. I don't believe there needed to be any scenes with Lando and Damon because Lando and Damon are not friends. They were teammates who just happened to be in love with the same young lady but they weren't friends. They didn't need to have a conversation. They didn't need to be in any of the of the scenes together because there is nothing between them. I don't think there's hate between them, but it's definitely not love. It's it needs to be it's space and opportunity, basically. And I and I just love that we didn't see that. It was no arguing or bickering between these two men. I'm glad that the writers did not go in that direction because we didn't need that and nothing warranted for that to happen. So now, I ain't going to lie. I was like, okay, how is Simone going to respond with Damon being, you know, back on campus? And we find out that Damon is going to the uh, going to the MLB and he signed with the Detroit Tigers or something. Don't quote me on the baseball team. <laughs> it was somebody with Detroit. That's all I know. Now, the mascot, I don't know. I don't really care, but it was Detroit. And he's going pro, which, you know, we're happy for, you know, Damon. And so... When he comes over for breakfast, they throw him like this surprise breakfast and they have the house decorated. It was really nice. And I was like, how is Simone going to respond? So I'm looking at their dynamic. I'm looking at how she's interacting with him. And I think Simone and Damon's interaction was both um, conducive to individuals who had a relationship with each other, who no longer are in relationship with each other. And I thought it was beautiful. This entire episode with Damon... And Simone, I absolutely loved it. 
I just like how this entire episode, Simone really gave the impression to me that whatever she had with Damon was completely over. She didn't give, I'm reminiscing, I'm reflecting, I may want it back. She didn't give that. And I really enjoyed that we didn't see a love triangle. Simone was laser focused on expressing to Lando how she felt about him. Even when she had her conversation with her aunt, you know, her aunt was like, you know, how are you doing with the other situation? And she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she was like, you know, I love Lando and Damon being here a few days is not going to change that. And I thought this was very different for Simone because a lot of times we didn't know what the hell Simone wanted. Okay. She was real double dutchy. With a lot of stuff. One minute she won't this. The next minute she won't that. Oop, no, I want this again. That's just how Simone rolled. So for me as a viewer, and you know, it was um, beautiful watching Simone come into this place in her life where she wanted something. She wanted to go after it and put herself out there. And <laughs> when Simone sets up the little situation with Lando and, you know, she sees Damon and Damon wants to talk to her. They have a little cute little interaction, a little playful interaction. And Damon wanted to talk to her. But Simone was like, can we talk tomorrow? Like, you know, I got to get to this thing. And even that, she was focused. I got something I need to do. And I know I can't sit here and talk to you right now. And so to me, every everything with them gave, you know, buddy. You know, it's a buddy situation. And I wanted to answer this question also that someone asked me. And they asked, do I feel that Simone was wrong? for how she treated Damon in the series in the series finale. And for me, no, I don't believe that Simone treated Damon wrong at all. I believe as I stated earlier in the review, I believe that Simone treated Damon as if this is someone who I was in a relationship with and I'm creating boundaries in this way because the way that they ended the relationship was yes, Simone ended it because he was going to another country to pursue baseball possibly become pro and that is exactly what happened and sometimes you know I think that we want to see someone act a certain way that would be conducive to how maybe we would res respond however I know situations like one myself there are exes that I have who are in relationships and things like that and we may have even been friends but I am one of those people that once you get in a relationship my dynamic with you changes because a I want to respect who you're with I want to respect who I'm with and depending upon the dynamic that we had whether we were sexually you know uh in sexually um together or whatever I believe that you have to be mindful of that when you're in a relationship with someone and or they are. But no, I don't believe she treated him wrong. I think that Damon wanted to talk to Simone about his feelings for her. And once he realized that Simone was truly over him, which I think she should have been, you know, that Simone was really over him. And it was all about Lando and her being all about Lando. I had no problem with it. Like, I had no problem with it. Like, oh, Damon, you my boy. you. This. I don't think they even really had that. That's why I stated Damon is someone I always believe that Simone should have just stayed friends with. I don't believe they ever should have crossed over to a romantic relationship. And even her interaction with him just proved that to be correct for me. Because I believe if Damon was really that dude in Simone's life, the, the situation would have been different. Her interaction with him would have been different, but it wasn't. I believe exactly what Simone told, um, Simone told Lando. You know, we had a connection from the start, and I thought I owed it to us to see it through. What the hell that, does that sound like? That does not sound like somebody who was like, you know, I was in love with him, and, you know, we just, we really connected. And even though I had feelings for you, Lando, at the time, Damon is where I wanted to be. He's who I wanted to be with. He's who my heart was longing for. She didn't say nothing like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think we have to really recognize things to be what they are for what they are. And the way Simone handled it, I don't have no beef with it. 
Okay, I don't have no beef with it. I don't feel like she owed Damon anything because obviously, even though she didn't tell Damon about her cancer, you know, we found that out. It doesn't seem like Damon was really interested in Simone's life either because they were not together. It really showed that they didn't have the strongest friendship either because it doesn't appear that either one of them was checking on the other. So, no, what what was she supposed to do? I don't think she was wrong. A lot of people feel like she was wrong, and that's okay. I'm not one that subscribes to that. I don't know what she was supposed to do, how she was supposed to come off. Because even when Damon wanted to talk to her, she was on her way to go talk to Lando. And at the time, that was the most important thing for her. And that's how it should be. I'm trying to go get my man, my man, my man, and you trying to talk to me about what? I don't know. And at this point, it doesn't even matter because I'm trying to go get my man. She was on a mission. And I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. I did have some people in uh in my DMs, you know, talking about that. And I'm like, girl, Simone, baby. Like I said, I'm one of those people who I watch the show for what it is. I don't have any favorites or nobody I didn't like. They all cool with me. Okay? Like a cup of sweet tea. All cool with me. And I don't have no problem with it. So, no, I don't think Simone was wrong. I, I, I surely don't. I think after everything Simone went through, she just wanted to be happy. She didn't disrespect Damon. I don't believe she made him feel less than. And if at any time Damon wanted to speak his mind, he could have. But like I said, once Damon saw Simone interacting with Lando, he knew what it was. And he just respected it. And I respect him for respecting that, knowing that this is who Simone wanted. And that's who she always wanted. Now, do I agree with her getting with Damon initially? Hell no, she never got with him. But we can't cry over spill milk. But she got the man who she was supposed to be with, who I believe she was supposed to be with. And I'm cool with that. So when she gets outside and she tells Lando how she feels, because he's asking her all these questions about, you know, um, what did you feel when you saw him referring to Damon? You know, now Damon is back. You know, it's okay. So he was under the impression, you know, Damon is back. Y'all only broke up because he was going to another country to play ball. He's back now, so that's probably where you want to be. And Simone was very adamant, like, that ain't pretty much that's not where I want to be. And just because he's back, does that automatically mean that I'm going to be with him? And so when he asked her the question, because somebody did message me and asked me how did I feel about Simone not answering the question when Damon, I'm excuse me, when Lindo asked her what did she feel when she first saw Damon, and she didn't answer. She was just kind of looking at him. And what I got from it, and y'all can tell me how y'all felt. What I got from it was Simone was literally watching the man that she loves question her feelings about him. And almost, you kind of tell she was kind of like, I was not prepared for this. I believe she was caught off guard by Lando's questions. I believe she was caught off guard by Damon believing that she wanted to be with um, with Lando believing that she wanted to be with Damon. I don't believe that she was prepared for that. That's my homegirl said, hey, look, wait a minute. No, no, no. I got a speech prepared, but I don't even need to talk about this speech. Let me get to the last little stanza. I need you to know that I want you, I want us, and I love you. And it was so sincere. Baby, when Damon, excuse me, um, when Lando told her, you don't know how long I wanted to hear those words. But I can't trust him. And that brother proceeded to walk away. I said, no, don't do my dog like that, Lando. Don't do my dog like that. But he did. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. I was literally yelling at my TV like, no, you didn't. No, you did not. And it was so funny to me because this was like a real conversation. When Simone got back to her house and Nate and Keisha asked her what happened, and Simone said, hmm, I told that boy that I loved him. <laughs> I was like, why did it sound like a conversation me and my friends have had in the past? Because when you don't even say the brother name, you just say, I told that boy that I loved him. Oh, baby, you hurt and you pissed. Simone was done with the day. Nate took her flowers and went in her room after she proceeded to tell uh, uh, Keisha uh, that, you know, her and JR may be more than friends or she may have had feelings for JR. And Keisha was like, you know, Jr. and I are just friends. I said, baby, there we go with that F word again. People love throwing that out. Just three episodes ago, Simone and Lando was telling everybody they were the F word too. 
or we're just friends. No, you may be friends, but you're not just friends. Let's stop the lies. But anyway, so fast forward, when we do get to the place of Lando, you know, coming to the acknowledgement of how he feels for Simone. But before we get to that, I love the second interaction that they had because Simone basically was telling Lando because, you know, Lando loves to tell people what they need to do and don't let fear run you and control you. And Simone gave him that. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm not the only one functioning in fear. Because fear is keeping you from speaking your truth. And the truth is, when it comes to us, Lando, you feel exactly how I feel. I said, he sure do, baby. He sure do. And we saw that later on. I thought this was such a beautiful moment when Lando considered Simone's question and he put on the little, you know, um, the slideshow and he began to refer to the things that he knows that he, that he is. And, and then when he got to a dark place and he wasn't in the best place with himself and it was uncertainty and doubt and just a really dark place in his life, he meets Simone that changed everything And I thought it was beautiful because a lot of times we do not know how our presence affect people, even those who are who we are in relationship with. And I'm glad that they wrote Lando to be a character of words. He uses his words to express how he feels where there can be no um, misconception or misunderstanding. So I really love that part. And then when he uh, mimicked Simone's actions of placing her hand over his heart and telling her that, You know, he wants her, he wants them, and he loves her. And it was so beautiful. Now, let me just say this, okay? The characters of Simone and uh, Lando, who are played by Jeffrey and um, Martin, oh, baby, they be kissing, kissing. I was trying to look at the other characters on the show, but they don't really kiss like that. I said, oh, baby, them too? Oh, they be kissing, kissing. Tongue and everything. I said, baby, (laughs) I ain't mad at it. I love to watch it because they have amazing, amazing chemistry. So I got what I wanted because I did state earlier in a previous review that I was never here for Damon and Simone being in a relationship. I I never was here for. I thought they were better off as friends. That's what I wanted. I believe that Simone should have chosen Lando long time ago uh the the first time she had to make a choice i believe he's he's always been her choice and i'll make a separate video as to why i so strongly believe that he was always her choice and the reasons why i feel she didn't choose him initially and so i was just happy that they got together i was happy that simone was able to play in this uh in this tournament and when she walked out, she was nervous. You know, Lando came to kind of calm her nerves. And we saw her aunt, you know, giving her another, you know, pep talk and encouraging her. And she didn't know what to expect. She was thinking she was going to have to deal with the whispers and the bickering of the fans and her fellow opponents. But when she got out there, they gave her a standing ovation. And I thought it was so beautiful. A standing ovation because Simone, don't get me wrong, I know a lot of people don't like her character. And Simone, she can work on a nerve. I'm not denying that. She can work, damn it, on a nerve. But one thing that I loved about her character, one of the things is that she was so persistent when it came to the matters of her heart and her desires and her believing that tennis was something that she really wanted to explore. So for her to get that standing ovation, for people to know that, you know, this young lady is 21 years old. She was diagnosed with Brent with breast cancer. She beat it. She's an overcomer. She got her body back into shape to compete with tennis on a collegiate level, possibly pro. I love that moment. I thought it was so beautiful. Now, one situation in this whole entire episode that I did not give, I didn't give not a damn about was Coach Marcus's son. So we found out they had the little boy tested to see if he was bipolar, and he was not. He doesn't have any mental issues going on. I said, you need to take him in that bathroom and whoop his natural ass. Do I like they used to do back in the day. Take off your belt and whoop his ass for how he destroyed your house. Because I would have came off better hoping that he had bipolar. And that was the reason why he destroyed Marcus's house. Because he couldn't find that little damn tablet or iPad or whatever he wanted. And you did all of that and you ain't got no mental issues. Oh, it's time to whoop ass. That's 
said, that's all I thought about. I said, oh, he doesn't have bipolar? Marcus, you need to beat him. I'm sorry. That little boy trashed that man's house for nothing? I was going to give him a pass. I said, oh, maybe he does have a mental illness, and that's why he responded the way that he responded. But this baby, he perfectly fine. Oh, he needs to get whooped. He a boy. He he could take a little punch to the chest. Uh-huh. I didn't give a damn about that storyline, but I ain't going to lie. When I found out he didn't have bipolar, it was a wrap for him. Marcus, do what you need to do. Do what you need to do, bro. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm going to spend the summer with you. Oh, 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 you are? I got something for that behind. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm happy with how All-American Homecoming ended. I'm glad that... Um, the only thing I'm concerned about or I'm curious about is where was Keisha running off to? And maybe I need to go back and watch it because I'm like, was, did she go to Simone's tennis match? Because if so, I don't remember seeing her because she ran off somewhere. Because Nate was telling Thea that he was so happy that his friend was choosing herself this time and not a man. But she was running off somewhere once she got the notification that she passed her exam. I'm like, was she going to try to find Cam to tell her to tell him that she passed? What was it? I don't know. We never got an answer for that. I don't think. And I think I watched this episode quite a few times, but I don't remember seeing Keisha at Simone's match. So it would be interesting to find out where the hell she was running off to. I don't know. But yeah, but that's all. I'm so sad to see it go. And prayerfully, this is not the end for our All-American Homecoming. And another network will pick it up and do it way more justice than the CW, which is not the network for us, by us, okay? Even if it's not a network um, by us, let it be a network for us. I don't like the CW. I'm going to just keep it real with y'all because I remember CW when it was UPN back in the Dizay and you had Moesha, you had the Parkers, you had Clueless. I remember way, way back in the day when UPN had Moesha, homeboys from out of space. We ain't going to talk about that show. I don't know what the hell they was thinking about with that one, but still it was black people. They built their entire network off of the talent of black folks and then canceled all of their shows. Canceled all the black shows to rein in this newfound, you know, with all these white shows and stuff like that. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? More power to you. But don't don't take no black shows over to that damn CW because they don't do us right. They fail us every single time. And the only reason why I think their original All-American is still going like the way that it's going because it is no longer a black show. Oops, did I say that? Yep, I did. Mm-hmm. But All-American Homecoming. Oh, we gonna miss you, G. We gonna miss you. But hopefully, this is not the last time that we see you. But I want to thank you guys for listening. Like I said, I'm gonna have more videos for All American that's gonna come out to really take some in depth look looks at some of these characters, their situations, and maybe you know things that we would have wanted to see happen to the characters. But I want to thank you guys for listening. Until next time, I will holler at y'all later, and y'all be safe out there. Bye.